Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hatha Yoga. Each day of this week, we will be exploring the five, each of the five elements according to yoga and Hinduism. So according to Chinese medicine, there's a variation. Um, so in yoga, we identify the five elements as earth, water, fire, air or wind, and space or ether. Whereas Chinese medicine um, has metal as the fifth one instead. There is a sister science to yoga that you might know of. It's an ancient Indian system and it's called Ayurveda. And according to Ayurveda, we acknowledge that not only does nature have these five elements, but we as part of nature have these five elements within us physically mentally and emotionally and when these five elements within us are in disharmony or are disproportionate that's what can cause dis-ease or ailments so let's discuss today the first of those five elements which is earth so if you think of the earth right or mother earth what do you feel or what do you picture I start to think of mountains and dirt and the ground and trees and rocks and boulders. So the essential feeling of the earth element is that of stability. So think about what makes you feel stable, physically, emotionally, mentally, on a day-to-day -day basis. I know that's a pretty general question, but let me give you a little more of what Ayurveda describes are the qualities of the earth element according to Bunyan Botanicals. So the element of earth is cool, stable, heavy, dry, rough, gross, dense, dull, and hard. And so this can show up in the body as growth, accumulation, and support in terms of processes. But if you think of the physical parts of our body that are part of literal stability, you can think of your skeletal system, right? Your physical frame. That is the earth element. Our muscles, our tissues, um, so the bones. So you might even think about what, what is the quality of these physical parts of your body, especially your skeletal structure. And maybe start to think about how you are carrying the earth element. Now, if we're deficient in the element of earth, we can feel ungrounded, undependable, anxious, emaciated, flighty, spacey, and you can feel that you lose touch with basic reality. And if we are in excess of the earth element, we can feel dull, sluggish, heavy, um, have poor digestion because we've got blocked channels of energy or instability in how we perceive the world with clarity. Now to cultivate a feeling of stability, Knowing this, we can, one, one advice from Ayurveda is to have a regular schedule of your awake time, your meal times, your sleep times. And so in that consistency, you establish a regular rhythm that you can anticipate and not have to feel anxious. Like, when am I going to eat lunch or whatever it is? And so there's a balance of body and mind through that regular rhythm. But if you feel that you have too much earth element in your day-to-day -day life, it's still important to have a regular schedule, but to make sure you do exercise daily so that you're not moving into a sense of sluggishness, there's activation. So here's something to reflect on in our physical practice, and we'll move a little deeper into the earth me element mentally in our meditation practice. How do you balance a feeling of stability with healthy productivity for you personally and how might you do that in your physical practice today based on how you're feeling right now knowing that we can have fluctuations of feeling more of the earth element less of the earth element even from moment to moment so as you sit here now maybe even place your hands at your belly or whatever your thighs wherever you can feel a sense of grounding Feel the ground that is beneath your physical body or the surface that's below, helping to support it. 
And then notice how you are making contact with that surface below. Literally, how are you pressing your weight downward and allowing what's above your pelvis to feel supported and uplifted. And now tune into your natural breath and just feel its frequency and flow. Tune into your mind state and emotional state. And perhaps feel how much of the earth element is present in you right now. If you're feeling very, very earth element <laughs> or an excess of it, maybe your practice is going to look a little more rigorous, a little more stimulating, maybe less child poses, more vinyasas. And if you're feeling light on the earth element, like you could use more stability, maybe you'll be in more stillness, whether that be resting or in a posture for a longer period of time. And so with that intention to balance the earth element within you today, let's begin to lengthen the breath through the sound or chant of Om three times. Take a deep inhale. Om. Seeing this breath, sitting up tall, inhale for a count of four, three, two, one, hold the breath in for four, three, two, one, exhale for four, three, two, one, hold the breath for four, three, two, one, inhale four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, exhale four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, in four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, out four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, and releasing box breathing or samavriti pranayama. These ease into slow, full inhales and exhales. And if you can, just breathing through the nose so that you can start to stoke a little internal warmth. While gently narrowing the back of your throat so that you're creating a very soft, smooth whispering sound now practicing ujjayi pranayama, still helping to steady the nervous system while helping the mind focus. So feeling the entire length of the inhalation, balance with the entire length of the exhalation, taking your time with each breath. And as you listen to that, I invite you to come down onto your knees, beginning to move on all fours in a few rounds of cat-cow. So setting your fingers spread on the ground Shoulders right over wrists, but knees a couple inches behind the hips. Feet are hips width apart. As you inhale, draw your heart forward, rolling the shoulders back as you lift the chest, looking up. As you exhale, contracting your belly, tuck your tailbone underneath, dropping your head to round your back. Taking several more as you slowly synchronize in and out breath with cow and cat pose. So if you're feeling a bit heated today or in the practice, you can opt to take cat cow pose in place of what we call a vinyasa. 
that includes plank, chaturanga, cobra, or upper dog. And then let's bring the feet together so that on your next exhale, you sink your hips down to your heels, bowing the forehead to the earth in balasana or child's pose. And just pausing here for about three to five breaths. Now this can be a very grounding pose. And like I said, if you're feeling the need for more grounding and stability today, you might be taking quite a few of these. As you reach your arms forward straight, let your elbows lift away from the floor so your hands are active, your arms are active. And then broaden across your shoulder blades here, rotating the outer sides of your upper arms, your triceps to face the floor. Then plug your shoulder bones back into their sockets while lengthening the crown of your head forward, lengthening your tailbone towards the rear of your mat. So keep those actions in your shoulders, in your upper arms, your tailbone lengthening. And as you spread your fingers wide, really root down through palms. Index fingers pointing forward parallel. Tuck your toes, separate your feet hips distance. And with very bent knees, lift your hips high, draw your hips back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Now feel free to take a few breaths to shift any way you may need. If you're not yet ready to be still, it could help to warm up the backs of your legs by gently pedaling your feet in place. It can help to loosen up your outer hips and lower back by swiveling your hips side to side as you do that. Tune into the balanced rhythm, a feeling of stability through your own breath. that balanced rhythm ever ceases or becomes disturbed, know what to do with your body to help rebalance the breath. Slowly walk your hands back to meet your feet so that you're folding over your legs at the rear of your mat. Feet parallel, bend your knees generously here. Now pressing your fingertips either on the ground or onto your shins. Draw your chest forward, inhale to lengthen your spine halfway up. Let your weight become heavier towards the front of your heels. Keep your weight there and as you exhale, fold from your hips with a long spine. Twice more, Ardha Uttanasana, inhale, really press with your fingertips and draw your spine forward. Reach your sternum forward, elongate, exhale, fold in. Remember, knees can be bent through this whole time. One more. Inhale, halfway lift into Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. Now bend your knees a lot. Really feel a sense of stability in your feet, in your legs. Even draw the navel in. And then drop your arms and head. And maybe even shimmy out your head, your shoulders, your wrists. Like you're flickering water out of your hands. Maybe even flutter the lips a bit. The shoulders lift up away from the neck as you completely drop your head. Just a few more breaths. Uttanasana. So all the while, this sense of fluidity and flow in your torso, let it come from feeling really grounded in your legs. The knees are very bent. And then as you inhale, keep shimming out the torso, the arms, the head, but start to roll your spine upright slowly. Stacking one vertebra at a time as you sort of dance the torso up. <sighs> and then once you arrive in mountain, let's come to stand at the top of your mat, paralleling your second toes with each other, spreading your toes brightly, rooting down through the inner and outer edges of your heels, your big toe mound, your pinky toes, and then just feel how you're landing your body on the ground. Feel your relationship to the ground through the soles of your feet. And as you press downward with intention, with confidence and trust, feel that rise of energy that goes upward it allows the body to lengthen more confidently upright. Feel your chest brightly open as the shoulders relax. 
palms facing forward with the arms releasing by your sides. And keep lifting through the crown of your head as we take just two more breaths. Notice the open space at your throat as your chin softly glides towards the back of your neck. Tadasana, mountain pose, also called samastitihi, equals standing pose. As you root down to your feet, inhale, circle your arms overhead. Watch your palms touch in salutation. Hinging from your hips, exhale, fold. Feel free to bend your knees any amount. Press the ground of your shins. Inhale, lengthen forward. Let your hands, let's step into plank with knees on the floor, pausing there for a few breaths. In plank, feel what is your base of support now. That's every part of your body touching the ground and holding your weight up. Feel your palms, index fingers parallel, weight spreading through every fingertip and base of the knuckles. Feel your knees, your shins, the tops of your feet. Now feel the lift of your lower belly towards your back as you elongate through your crown and through your tailbone. Broaden your chest forward, take another breath as you look at the floor ahead. With an exhalation, keep this long spine and glide forward. Bend your elbows back to graze your side ribs through Chaturanga Dandasana. Come all the way down. Now, as you point your toes on the ground, can you stream energy through your big toes, pointing them back as you press the pinky toenails down into the floor. Knees are lifted, legs are straight. Elongate your tailbone towards your big toes. And inhale, coil your chest just lightly off the ground. Hug the elbows towards your sides. Look on the floor ahead. Exhale, press up through your hands and knees, spreading your fingers like roots. Tuck your toes. Exhale, lift your hips back to downward facing dog. Now let's cultivate stability by being still. A few breaths here. Direct your gaze on one spot on the floor. Feel the energy of your hands pressing the mat down and forward, rebounding a lift up your spine as the shoulders rise back. So your sitting bones are pressing towards your rear wall and sky. Look down through the backs of your feet, through your heels. Two more breaths. Now, as you bend your knees, lift your heels and hips high, look forward of your hands. After exhaling, hold your breath, lift your pelvic floor, and walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat, forward folds. Pressing your shins to the ground, inhale, lift your heart, lengthens forward. Exhale, fold. Pressing through your feet, inhale, rise, watch your palms touch. Standing tall, exhale, trace your midline with your thumbs, and then into mountain pose. Now let's continuously flow one breath each posture for two more rounds of sun salutation A. Rooting down through your feet, inhale, circle your arms, palms touch. Exhale, bowing from your hips with a long spine. Press the ground of your shins, inhale, lift the spine, halfway lengthen. Step back into your plank with knees on the floor or legs straight. Continue the exhale, gliding forward and grazing your elbows by your ribs to come all the way down. Root through every toenail. Inhale to cobra. Draw the shoulder blades down your back. Tucking your toes, exhale, lift through the navel, through plank. Lift the hips back, downward facing dog. Take three slow breaths here. Steady your eyes. Still your body. On your third exhalation, hold the breath at the end while you walk or float to the top of your mat. Then inhale to rise halfway. Exhale to fold. From down to your feet to rise on an inhale, palms touch. Exhale, tracing your midline, mountain pose. Inhale, sweep your arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. 
step to plank, maybe float into chaturanga if you're feeling that. Lower on an exhale. Cobra or upward facing dog, strong through the tops of your feet as you lift the chest. Exhale, lift to your navel, draw the hips back. Downward facing dog, about three breaths. So now as you feel your own breath pace, take it at your own, last round when you're ready, through Surya Namaskar A. And then we'll meet in downward facing dog. As you feel ready meeting in downward dog we'll take a few breaths there again pay attention as you hold this posture to how you are connecting to the ground beneath what parts of your body are making contact and how are they making contact to support what's above it it's interesting how tension or issues in the neck and the shoulders or in the lower back can often be affected by what's happening below, like in the feet, or what's connecting you to the ground. From downward facing dog, bring your feet together to touch. Turn out your right thigh at the hip. And now you can bring the sole of your right foot into your inner left ankle, hugging the left leg in towards your midline, sort of like tree pose in downward dog. Or you can explore crossing your right ankle above your left knee onto your left thigh like a figure four making sure to flex the right foot whatever variation of gently opening the hip that you're in let's take a few more breaths keep rooting down through finger spread lifting both shoulders and hips back equally drawing the lower belly towards the spine supporting your lower back One more breath in this hip opener. Now on an inhale, straighten your right leg behind you. Turn the right hip to face the ground. And as you exhale, bend your right knee towards your nose. Really hollow the belly. Feel its strength so that you can quietly land the right foot between your hands. Spinning your left heel to the ground with a toe slightly forward. Align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot. From down through both of your feet as you cartwheel your arms to rise up, preparing for warrior two. So now feel how your right outer hip rotates slightly under your body so that you can fully turn out your right leg from the hip. As you're bending your right knee directly over the heel, the center of the knee and the center toe are tracking down the midline of your mat. Now feel the contrast of your left leg slightly rotating inward from the hip, completely straight as you firm the top of your left thigh bone towards your right wall behind you. Notice how this affects the orientation of your pelvis, which is shaped like a bowl. Let your bowl pelvis <laughs> orient as neutrally upright as possible and then feel how that affects what's above it. Articulate length in your spine as you broaden across your arms. And as you're reaching through your fingertips, can you relax the shoulders at the same time? Steady your eyes forward, just past your right hand, or close your eyes. Now in this grounding posture called Vira Bhadrasana 2, Warrior 2, let's take another four deep breaths. As you press down through both of your feet, straighten your right leg, we'll prepare for triangle. You may like to shorten your stance a couple inches, up to you. Firm the front muscle of your right thigh, 
slide your hips sideways towards the back of your mat while reaching your right arm horizontally forward towards your front wall as far as it can reach before lowering that hand onto your right shin or just to the right of the leg directly under your right shoulder. Now continue to rotate the right glute under your body as you tack the crease of your right hip towards your left heel. So you're lengthening the right side of your torso, not shortening it. And as you raise your left arm, feel your wrists stack in one line. Notice your breath here. Can you feel stability through your legs, your feet, what's in contact with the floor beneath? So much so that you could lighten the weight of your right hand where you've placed it while spiraling your chest open to slightly face the sky. Choose one spot to direct your gaze, your drishti, as we take about four more breaths, stabilizing here in Uttita Trikonasana, Triangle Pose. Spiraling your left outer upper arm to face your left wall. Reach your left arm towards your front wall, creating more extension through your left side body, but draw the shoulder blades down your back. A few more breaths here. Extended triangle pose. Now look at the ground at your right foot and lower your left hand on the left side of your front leg. Pivot your left toes to face forward and step your left foot another foot forward to shorten your stance. Step the right foot a few inches to the right until your feet are about hips width apart. Both heels are on the ground. Now you may want to have blocks under your hands here as we come into pyramid pose. Ground firmly through both feet, spreading your toes without gripping. Draw the right hip slightly back. You can even use your thumb to do that. And as you balance the height of your two hips, balance the length of both sides of your torso. Draw your sternum and crown forward. Firm the belly towards your back and breath by breath, begin to hinge forward. Parjvottanasana. Last two breaths here. Now, if you're feeling a bit sluggish, spinal twists are a great way to get energy moving. So we'll take that next. As you root through your feet, energize your legs and belly. Inhale, lift your spine parallel to the floor. Use your right thumb to hook your right hip crease back. Keep the hips level and exhale. Turn your chest little by little to face your right wall. Then raise your right arm up, stacking your wrists and shoulders. Revolved triangle pose. Parita Trikonasana. Now your left hand can be right under your left shoulder, or if you want to go further into the twist and maybe challenge your balance some more, you can place your left hand on the right or the outside of your right foot, perhaps using a block. Keep lengthening your spine forward to trace the midline of your mat. Make sure it's not veering right. And with your exhales, keep rotating your rib cage, twisting mostly across your waistline for the last two breaths. Feel that stability here through your legs, through your feet, through your breath. And then inhale, look down at your right foot. Exhale, place both hands on the floor, step to plank. Now you could opt to take cat-cow or lower from plank into your own vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing duck. Once in downward dog, take a few breaths to just feel what's here right now. How does your body feel after? Quite a few poses on just one side. Has your breath pattern shifted in any way? 
And then feel that sense of stability through your palms and feet. Bring your feet together to touch in Downward Dog. Try to move into the same variation of hip opening as you did on the first side. So either turning out the left leg, come into Tree Downward Dog, or flexing the left foot, come into Figure 4 shape, Downward Dog. Use your connection to the ground through your hands to lift your hips up and back. Shoulders up and back. About three more breaths here. On your next inhale, straighten your left leg behind you, squaring your hips to face the floor. As you exhale, round your back into plank, bending the left knee towards your nose. Get strong in the belly to softly step the foot right between your hands, spinning your right heel down. Align your left heel to the arch of your right foot. Press into the ground with your feet and windmill your arms to rise. For warrior two. So here, feel your left outer hip rotate slightly under your body to fully turn out your left leg as you bend the knee right over the heel, tracking the knee and middle toe down the midline of your mat. Feel the right leg slightly turn inward as you press downward to the outside edge of the foot, straightening the right leg as you press the top of the right thigh bone back towards your left wall. With arms wide open, can you feel the alignment of your pelvic bowl? Find a slight lift in your frontal hip bone so the tailbone descends, creating space in your sacrum. And then can you imagine restacking your spine's vertebrae from the bottom up with your breath? Arms wide open, shoulders relaxed. With your gaze steady, let's take another four breaths here in Virabhadrasana two. Now, firming down to your feet, straighten your left leg. For triangle, you may want to shorten your stance or not. Glide your hips sideways towards the rear of your mat while reaching your left arm horizontally past your left knee as far as you can before lowering the hand. Stacking your shoulders and wrists in one line. Keep wrapping your left outer hip under while tacking the left hip crease back towards the rear edge of your mat. Notice your breath here as you've transitioned into Uttita Trikonasana. Find one focal point for your eyes to help steady your focus. As we take about four more breaths here, rooting down through the feet with energized legs and stable belly while expanding in all directions of your limbs and spine. From here, wrap your right tricep to face your right wall and sweep your right arm overhead towards the front while creating space in your neck, sealing your front ribs in, spiraling your chest to face the sky. Just a couple more breaths and extended triangle. You might focus some breath expanding in your right side waist. Look down at your left foot, then frame it with both of your hands. Pivot your right foot to face forward entirely, and then shorten your stance about one foot less. Walk the left foot out to the left and drop both heels, both hips facing forward, both legs straight. Feel a sense of stability through your feet and legs. And with hands on the floor or on blocks, inhale to draw your heart forward through the gates of your arms. Feel that stability at your navel as you lift the belly. And exhale, hinge forward, little by little. 
into pyramid pose. Parjvatanasana. Last two breaths. We're rooting down through toes spread, heels grounded. Inhale, lift your spine parallel to the floor. You might use left thumb to tack the left hip back, keeping the hips leveled. Exhale, rotate your chest to begin facing your left wall, little by little. Raise your left arm up, stacking your shoulders and wrists. You might opt to step the right hand on the left side of your left foot with or without the block. But make sure your spine is still tracing the midline of your mat. The tendency might be to turn the head left since you're twisting in that direction, but keep rotating along the axis of your spine as the crown of your head points at your front wall. Parita Trikonasana. Revolved Triangle Pose. Last two breaths here. And then looking down at your left foot, place your hands to frame it and this time Step your right foot next to your left foot and fold at the top of your mat. Bring your feet together to touch and press to your feet firmly. You might bend the knees. And inhale to sweep your arms overhead into Urdhva Hastasana. Interlacing your fingers except the index. Draw the shoulder blades down and hug your front ribs in. Reach your tailbone actively towards the ground between your heels. With each breath, pressing your feet into the floor, can you rise higher through your spine while side bending to the right as you exhale. A few breaths to the right. As you draw your navel in, inhale, rise up back to center. Plug the shoulders down again. Exhale, stand a little taller. Breathe in here. And then side bend to your left for a few breaths. Tailbone reaching towards between your heels. Inhale back to center and tracing your midline. Bring your hands together at your hips, or excuse me, at your hips, not together. And now feel how your two hip bones are facing evenly forward as much as possible here. Can you feel the strong center line of your body? Think of it as an energetic line with two arrows, one arrow moving downward, tracing the inseam of your legs down to your inner heels, and one arrow moving upward, lifting up through the crown of your head. Imagine that as a strong, stable line of support. You might even give it the color red, which is the root energy center's color. So as you think of that strong line, creating symmetry as the two hips evenly face forward, the two shoulders evenly face forward, hands on the hips. Can you use your hands to gently pull your hip bones downward and let your feet feel a little more connected to the floor? Really pressing downward. Sitting bones are reaching downward. And as you do that, zip up the lower belly, lift it towards the heart and begin to flex your right foot as you lift the right knee to the level of your right hip or as close as you can. I keep drawing the hips down Keep pressing the left sole down, and then can you feel that other side of the arrow rising up to your center line and crown? Keep breathing. Now begin to press your inner right heel towards your rear wall as you lean your torso forward, coming into warrior three. With your hands and your hips, keep directing, directing your hips to, to level with each other. You can bend your left knee any amount here and you also have the option to place your hands down on the floor or on blocks right under your shoulders. Can you feel how your left and right legs have separate lanes? They're not crisscrossing the midline. And can you imagine that strong line from your tailbone tracing the inseam of your right leg 
reaching back to your inner right heel. The other arrow moving up the center line, crown reaching forward. And then you might even explore other variations with your arms, like opening them apart or raising them overhead. Maybe the palms meet. Last three breaths, rotating the inseam of your right leg towards the sky. So your right hip bone faces the ground. Get really long like mountain pose and take one more breath. Now keep your weight on your left, but we're gonna come back to that first position, rising, bend the right knee, bring your hands to your hips. Flex the right foot, breathe here. Then turn out the right thigh at the hip, entering tree pose or figure four in which you bend the left knee like chair pose, crossing the right ankle over the left thigh. If you're in tree pose, your left leg is straight and your right sole is hugging the inside of your left leg below or above the knee. If you're in the figure four like chair, you can bring your hands together at your heart. You could raise your arms overhead or you can plant your hands on the ground or on blocks with the option to move into flying single pigeon pose, which is an arm balance. Now up to you where you take it, but can you feel the quality of your breath wherever you've chosen to go? Find some stillness where you are for another three deep breaths. Press down through your standing leg, rising tall. Step the right foot next to the left in mountain pose. Take a deep inhale from the soles of your feet, imagining the breath rise to your crown, to your mouth. Let it all go. And as you close your lips, come back to Ujjayi Pranayama through the nose. Bring your hands to your hips and actually pull your hip bones downward. Let your sitting bones reach actively towards your inner heels. Spread your toes, press to your heels. Zip up the lower belly and bend your left knee as you flex the foot off the floor. Left knee is about the height of the left hip. Keep pressing down actively, gently pulling the pelvis down, spine lifting, Envision that double arrow center line. And begin to press your inner left heel towards your rear wall, bowing the spine until it's horizontal. Honoring that center line of your body. You can bend your right knee any amount here in Warrior Three, turning your left hip bone to face the ground, spiraling inseam of your left leg towards the sky, flexing the left foot. Notice what variation of your hands are calling to you right now, placing them down, joining them at the heart, spreading your wings, or extending the arms forward. Feel the balance of your breath, another three cycles. Keep your weight on your right foot as you slowly rise to that first posture, bending the left knee off the ground. Choosing tree pose from here, turning out the left leg or figure four. Try to go into the same variation as you did on the first side. If figure four, flex your left foot. If tree, right leg stay straight. Any variations with your arms. Find the position you can be still in as you steady your eyes and breath. Another three cycles of breath. Press to your standing leg as you rise up, stepping the left foot next to the right. Imagine breathing in again from the soles of your feet, whole body to the crown. Stick out your tongue, let some heat out, lion's breath. <sighs> One more time, deep inhale, mouth wide open, 
Maybe eyes too, tongue out. Ah. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, lower down into plank pose. Knees down or legs straight. Let's take three strong breaths in plank. Press the heels back if your legs are straight. Honor that strong midline, that center line with the two arrows. Lift the navel, broaden the chest and shoulder blades. And keeping that strong center line, glide through slowly, Chaturanga Nandasana, and come all the way to the ground. So we'll enter Sphinx Pose. Lower your legs straight, knees close together, feet close together, and then slide your forearms forward onto the floor, lifting your chest. Place your elbows right beneath your shoulders, palms face down flat. Feel the energy of your legs. Can you reach your big toes towards your rear wall actively so the knees are not resting on the floor, they're lifting? Can you flare your pinky toes and press the toenails into the floor, every one of them? And as your forearms press down into the ground, can you lift the chest open, not by cranking your neck, but by contracting the upper middle back right under the shoulder blades. Notice your breath. Can you slightly draw your navel towards your spine as you elongate your tailbone towards your inner heels? Another three breaths. Cultivate a feeling of buoyancy at the center of your chest, smiling your collarbones apart pressing your shoulder heads down. And now from the Sphinx pose, cross your left forearm on the floor, right in front of your chest, bend your right knee, backstroke your right arm to open the inner shoulder, catch the big toe, the inside of your right ankle or foot, Slide your knees closer together if possible. Root down to your two hip bones. And slowly bring your right heel just slightly to the outside of your right hip. Let your chest completely open forward. As you release your two shoulders down. You might imagine breathing length into the front muscle of your right thigh and into the crease of that hip. Rooting your pelvis to the floor. Last deep breath. Gently release your right leg straight. Place both forearms in front. Come back to Sphinx as you wiggle the knees close together. Press your toenails into the earth. Cross the right forearm in front of your chest and bend your left knee. Back stroking your left arm, catch the big toe side of your left ankle or foot. Press your two frontal hip bones onto the floor as you bring your left heel slightly to the outside of your left hip, turning your chest completely forward as you rest the shoulders down. How is your breath? Perhaps visualize it, opening up your left quadricep and into your left hip flexors. One more breath here. And with the exhale, let it go. Rest your forehead to the ground. Slide your knees close together as we enter one round. Five to 10 breaths, your count of bow pose. Danyarasana. Bending both knees, reach your hands back to catch your outer feet, the pinky toe side. Kick your legs towards straight as you pull your feet towards your hips. Lifting the knees strongly, hug the knees close together so they don't splay wider than your hips distance. Breathe your chest wide open and slide your shoulder blades down your back. Let your neck relax. So when you finish five to 10 breaths here, 
release your legs and just lower your head to rest. Feel the base of your base of support here is your abdomen. So maybe breathe into your abdomen, massaging it to help stimulate your digestive flow. And once you've let go of the posture, you may like to bend your knees and gently windshield wiper your shins together left and right as you take long exhales to your mouth to help cool off. Sliding into child's pose. We'll pause there for a few deep breaths, sinking your hips onto your heels, knees together or wide apart. You may like to extend the arms forward and just continue to stretch your lower back. Perhaps even imagine breathing into your lower back as you firm the belly towards it. And as your hands are planted alongside your knees, drop your chin towards your chest. And with an inhale, slowly roll your spine upright to sit. Bring your legs out in front of you as we prepare for a seated spinal twist. Extending your left leg forward as I marry you, either step your right foot in front of your right hip or cross it outside of your left knee, but really ground the sole of that foot. If you're in this ladder pose, you could also bend your left knee just be sure that your two hip bones or sitting bones are rooted evenly. With your right hand behind your pelvis on the floor, raise your left arm. Press into the ground with all of your body that's touching it so that you can rise taller as you inhale. Exhale, twist to your right and lower your left arm. So you're either holding your front shin or you're hooking the elbow outside the thigh. Continue to twist, continue to lengthen, breath by breath. Take one more deep breath here. At the end of your exhalation, unwind your spine. And let's straighten right leg forward. Set up the same way if you can, left foot in front of the hip or outside of the right knee, maybe bending the right knee. Place the left hand behind your pelvis, right arm up. Press down with your base of support to as you inhale. Twisting to your left, little by little as you exhale, lower your right arm, maybe hook the elbow. So notice what's rising or has the energy of lifting in your body here. And notice what has the energy of drawing downward. Let your shoulders draw downward as your crown lifts upward. Let your pelvis and legs draw downward as your lower spine lifts upward, as the belly lifts in and up. As we practice yoga more and more, we can become more aware of these, these variations of energetic directions, right? The internal movement, not the gross physical, but the energetic movement. Let's finish one more cycle of breath. And as you exhale and wind, let's bring the soles of the feet together for Baddha Konasana. Sitting tall, pressing the pelvis downward. Use your exhales to lean forward from your hips, maybe even walking the hands forward. Bound angle pose, bowing down towards the earth. Perhaps a thought of gratitude for 
how earth supports you. How have you felt supported by the earth today? And just recognizing even the simplest things is like stepping on the ground and feeling security. You're not going to fall over or sink down. Or in your nourishment, in your meals today, how has the earth supported you? And slowly walking your hands towards your feet again, lift your chest, breathe into rise. Come on down onto our backs for happy baby pose. Soles facing the skies, the knees bend apart, outside of the shoulders, parallel your feet. And here, ground your tailbone and your shoulders while resting your head. And if you like, you can rock side to side, give your sacrum a little massage. You could also sandwich the soles of your feet together as you hold the outsides of them and splay the thighs apart. Same posture we just did, but lying on your back with legs in the air. And then for another minute, you can continue with this or choose another way to lift your legs up so that you can cool off in an inversion. Shoulder stand, supported shoulder stand, plow pose only practicing plow or shoulder stand if you're free from neck injury and know how. And a simple grounding inversion is to lift your legs up and let your palms rest on your belly. Just take your time as you're ready, easing out of your inversion. Perhaps drawing your bent knees into your chest or taking a brief fish pose so that you can start to wind down into corpse pose, a still posture of lying down restfully, doing nothing, closing your eyes there, and even letting go of controlling your breath. If you have a blanket, you might keep it folded and rest it right on top of your pelvis and lower belly as that can also feel grounding.
taking your time in your own way, slowly begin to move your body gently out of stillness, perhaps taking a few deeper breaths to help wake up from Shavasana. Maybe you turn over to your right side, and as you feel ready, pressing the ground so that you can rise into the comfortable seat of your choice, Sukhasana, or easy pose. As we sit for five minutes of meditation, take a moment to adjust your body so that you can feel connection to the surface below, a sense of grounding in your body while helping to lift your spine, open your heart space, relaxing your shoulders. Now, one way to simply help ground through the gesture of the palms is to simply rest them face down on your lap. You might even like to bring the thumb and first finger to touch in Gyana Mudra to help focus. Choose to either close your eyes or to softly gaze on one spot ahead. And as we continue to connect with earth elements within you, I invite you to first think of what comes to mind when you think of a symbol or a person or a being that represents stability, groundedness, someone who's able to stay cool in the heat of adversity. Perhaps it's somebody that you know personally, but it's a figure, a hero, or an archetype, or a spiritual being that you look up to. Or it could be an animal that symbolizes that. Now allow a moment to visualize this being, the symbol of strength in the elements ability to be stable, reliable, and healthily productive. And for the remainder of three minutes, when you feel those qualities that this person or symbol represents. Allow them to be a mirror to see those qualities within you. In what ways are you stable? Or can you show strength and calm? Remember those qualities that we can detect in others often mean that we have those qualities within ourselves. So as you step into the rest of your evening or day, how do you show up with those qualities of strength, stability, and confidence? Join the palms to meet at the heart as we bow in. Close. 
in this practice with one chant of Om. Take a deep breath. Oh. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.